Hello and welcome to another video on my channel. My name is Bennett Grazer. My name is Brian Grazer and today we're gonna put the Tamron 28 to 75 f 2.8 up against the Sony 24 to 105 f4 hit, hit that, that intro, intro. All right guys, as you can see, I have my brother with me. He came all the way from the States to spend Christmas with me. And we went outside yesterday and I realized that he was shooting with the Tamron lens. I never tried out the Tamron lens. I always use the Sony. I thought it would be interesting to switch lenses and test the Tamron while he would be testing the Sony to see which lens would be the right choice for the Sony full frame mirrorless camera. So while testing these lens, we came up with some pretty interesting results. So let's start. Tamron is a bit lighter and smaller than the Sony. With the Sony mounted on the camera, it feels a bit front heavy while the Tamron has a good balance. The build quality of the Tamron is good, but not as great as the Sony lens. The Sony is weather sealed, whereas the Tamron is not. The Tamron does not have image stabilization while the Sony has. Yeah, and even though most Sony cameras have in-body image stabilization, the IBIS works together with the lens stabilization, resulting in a better stabilization. The Tamron does not have an AF MF switch on the side and has no custom function like the Sony has on the side. Exactly. I'm used to having the zoom ring behind the focus ring. With the Tamron, it is actually the other way, so I had to get used to that. So the Sony has a greater zoom range going from 24 to 105, whereas the Tamron's focal length only ranges from 28 to 75 millimeters. It's definitely beneficial to have that extra range that allows me to get different types of shots. Looking at the aperture of the f2.8 on the Tamron, the lens definitely captures more light than the f4 aperture. Well, but it isn't really a big difference when using the Sony a7 III that has a good low light capability. Uh, as for the bokeh, I don't really see a big difference in both lenses. Both lenses produce similar shallow backgrounds uh, when ranging at its longest focal length. As for the sharpness, the Tamron is slightly sharper than the Sony. The autofocus system on the Tamron is as good as the Sony lens, both focusing super quickly, right? As for the close-up, with the Tamron, you can get surprisingly close to the subject, almost functioning as a macro lens. Yes, that is true. With the Sony lens, you can get close, but not as close as the Tamron lens, which is a great additional feature. Looking at the price, the Tamron costs around $900, which is cheaper than the Sony, costing around $1,200. So what do you think? Is there a winner between those two lenses? Well, that is a good question. It all depends what you're into. Now, if you're a travel photographer and you find yourself in harsh conditions where it's always raining and it's dusty and there's a lot of sand, uh, you might want to go with the uh, Sony over here. However, I am very, very happy with the Tamron. The build quality is solid and it performs like a first party lens and it cost me $300 less. So it is all up to you uh, what you're looking for. But personally, I would not trade this lens for my brother's lens. What? You're crazy. What I really liked about the Tamron lens is the ability to capture uh, macro shots or really clo great close-up shot. Whereas with this one, uh, it was kind of hard to get really close. 
uh, unless I would uh, zoom all the way in. Mm -hmm. But I was quite impressed with the with the macro shots. Overall, I think that the Sony 18 to 105 is the better lens choice. Even though both the Tamron and the Sony lens have good travel zoom range, what makes the Sony lens so great is the extra focal length. It does make a big difference with the extra range. It can go from a great wide angle capturing landscapes to a really nice telephoto for portrait, generally giving you the option to capture a wide variety of imagery. The aperture of f4 works really great for me since the Sony a7 III performs very good in low light uh, and produces a great shallow depth of field when used correctly. Alright guys, that was it for today's video. If you liked this video, please leave a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below uh, what you think is the right lens fit for your camera. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so because I would greatly appreciate it. Again, thank you so much. Uh, have a great holiday, happy new year, and see you in the next video. Peace.